Joining me right now is Illinois Congressman Rajna Krishnamoorthy. He's a Democratic ranking member of the newly formed Select Committee on China. He's also a member of the House Intelligence Committee. So, Congressman, the president just there moments ago saying we're going to take care of it. What do you interpret that to mean? I think that he's going to defer to the best judgment of the military in this particular instance. Um, as you know, the military is counseled. Uh, taking measured and smart steps with regard to this balloon. It doesn't pose an immediate threat, um, either in terms of collection capabilities, presumably because we are uh, taking countermeasures to prevent intelligence collection, uh, but also it's uh, flying at an altitude that doesn't interfere with uh, civilian aircraft. And so I think that um, the military uh, is advising the president to take measures to uh, deal with it. And I hope that they are also... Uh, learning capabilities of that balloon in terms of its uh, surveillance capabilities. And that's a very important lesson for us to learn as well about Chinese technology. Congressman, at what point do you say, OK, it's time to, to knock this thing out of the sky? Well, I again, I think we'd have to defer to the military leaders and the head of the Northern Command uh, with regard to that issue. Um, but I, I read it published reports that uh, they were talking about potentially doing something with it, um, maybe as it crosses the Atlantic. But one thing is very important, which is as a member of the Intelligence Committee, um, I hope that we don't destroy that technology, that somehow we're able to salvage it, uh, because, again, it helps us to learn as much as possible about Chinese Communist Party capabilities and to be able to counter them as well. As a member of the House Intel Committee, are you being briefed on its location? Have you been told anything about its whereabouts? No, uh, I'll be returning on Monday, and then we'll be learning more, hopefully, in classified spaces. But ever since this uh, balloon story popped, so to speak, uh, we've been, uh, uh, you know, fed a steady stream of the latest information that is uh, able to be shared over unclassified uh, uh, bases. Our guest in our last, um, uh, in, in the first uh, few minutes of our show said this could be a way for China to push the envelope, essentially saying that a lot of the satellites that China already has up in the air can probably gather more information than this balloon can. Do you agree with that assessment? Well, I think the one difference is that, um, as you know, uh, a high altitude balloon can loiter over a specific area for a much longer period of time than a satellite can for the most part. Uh, those satellites that travel, especially in low Earth orbit, um, basically uh, go over or go around the world in about 90 minutes. And so there's going to be intermittent uh, photography or images taken of any given spot. And so this particular balloon, especially if it's maneuverable, can basically um, hover over a certain area for a longer period of time. And uh, that obviously allows for uh, a different type of collection than what a satellite can do. You know, this is all anybody can talk about, as you can imagine. And, you know, people right now in the Carolinas purportedly taking out their cameras and their telescopes trying to catch a glimpse. What is your message to people? We know that there, we, the American people have been told that there's no immediate national security risk, but what's your message to people? I think that my message is, um, you know, we need to take a smart measured approach to this particular uh, high altitude balloon, even keeping in mind that uh, we have to deal with the Chinese Communist Party threats, whether they're military or economic or technological, which requires a, uh, a broader whole of government initiative. Uh, but this particular um, balloon, it is a surveillance balloon. It's not a, it's not a weather balloon, uh, which to me is kind of a George Santos style whopper that the hmm. Chinese Communist Party is trying to uh, make right now. Um, and I, I think that uh, this is a learning moment for us. I think that we have to do everything we can to, um, you know, get the maximum amount of information about that balloon, their technological capabilities, and how do we counter them going forward? Because uh, one of the questions that I'll be asking uh, next week is uh, what other balloons exist out there that might be headed our way, uh, given that we know about this one. Well, this comes as the CIA director publicly gave a new warning over China's military ambitions. Let's listen. I wouldn't 
underestimate uh, President Xi's ambitions with regard to Taiwan. He's been pretty clear about that over the years. I think he's watched very carefully, it seems to us, Putin's experience in Ukraine and been a little bit unsettled and sobered by that as well. We know as a matter of intelligence that he's instructed the People's Liberation Army to be ready by 2027 to conduct a successful invasion. Now, that does not mean that he's decided to conduct an invasion in 2027 or any other year, but it's a reminder of the seriousness of his focus and his ambition. How concerning is this possibility and how much is it factoring into how this is being navigated? I mean, is it potentially also that part of the military advice to not shoot it down immediately is that the Chinese could see this as an act of aggression? Well, I think that it is concerning what Director Burns said. And by the way, uh, Chairman Xi has said that he would like them to be ready by 2027. So they might be ready sooner than that. But I think that the main point is uh, with regard to this balloon, it has violated our sovereignty and airspace. So I don't question our military's ability and um, our um, being in the right should we want it to take it down. However, with regard to Taiwan, we want the status quo. We want peace in the region. We don't want a cold war or a hot war. But uh, if the Chinese Communist Party does to Taiwan what Russia has done with Ukraine, uh, it's all the more reason why, one, we have to see through to victory Ukraine's prevailing uh, in Russia's criminal invasion of Ukraine, uh, because I think Chairman Xi is watching it very carefully. And then two, we have to prepare our partners, allies, and friends in the region, including Taiwan, to deter aggression and to help supply their self-defense, which we're obligated to do anyway under the Taiwan Relations Act. Okay, Congressman Raja Krishnamurthy, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. All right, thank folks, we want to get you back to some breaking news that we were just...